सुंदरता सालिनता सभ्यता इने हुन हमरा विशेषता रानी थर डिजाइन कलेक्शन एक्सक्लूसिव एंड लार्जेस्ट वैरायटी ऑफ साड़ी लहंगा एंड कुर्ता सलवार टू इन वन बुटीक एंड हेल्थ केयर हाला संबंधी हर एक समस्या तथा दम बात माइग्रेन पत्थरी र पैरालाइसिस को गारंटी का साथ उपचार गरिन्छ रानी छ डिजाइन कलेक्शन 32 पुतली सनराइज आर्कड 9 काठमाडौ कांटेक्ट 9851136899 9851458899 प्रोपराइटर डाक्टर नन्दनी शर्मा फिल्म प्रोड्युसर वसन्त कुमार श्रेष्ठ कोअर्डिनेटर राम भंजारी आर यू रेडी Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nader Diab, uh, I'm the founder of the Globe Jumpers and uh, today I'm, uh, I'm delighted and I'm very happy to be here to talk to you a bit about what I do and why I've been invited by DHT to talk about uh, my blog and foundation. Um, thanks for having me. Um, in case you're wondering if this is a real picture or it's Photoshop, it's actually a very real picture. Does anybody know where that... Um, a rock is not really. It's located in Norway. It's called Kiera Bolten. It's a it's a natural formation rock in Norway. Uh, this is my uh, buddy Imad, with who I founded the Globe Jumpers. He was doing an exchange, uh, uh, the exchange semester in Norway in the University of Bergen, and uh, he got the chance to visit that spontaneous uh, place. So uh, this is me, and this is him. And uh, my name is Nader Diab, like I said. Uh, I travel around the world. Uh, I love traveling. And uh, I'm a biologist. I did my bachelor's degree in biology at the Université de Montréal. And uh, at the same time as I was doing my biology, I was traveling around the world. Uh, I was always fascinated by traveling. And I started uh, traveling when I was 18. Originally, I'm from Lebanon. Uh, I came here uh, to study and uh, fell in love with uh, Canada, fell in love with traveling and uh, I just uh, started uh, going through my passion and exploring more the, the, the positive side of traveling. I'm also doing uh, my uh, postgraduate degree in McGill and public relations and communication management. The McGill they call me a public relations guru and a world traveler. I like that. Um, and I'm also a philanthropist. Uh, I'll tell you more about the philanthropy side um, behind Globe Jumpers. But first of all, I just want to give you a brief uh, introduction about what is the Globe Jumper and why I was invited here today. Uh, this is also Imad. He's uh, my partner and uh, the other Globe Jumper with who I travel with. Uh, he is. Um, he is uh, 30 years old. I'm also 30 years old. Um, he has a bachelor's degree in environmental science uh, and he's a hostel owner. He has his own hostel running. We called it the Globe Jumpers 2, but it's located all the way in Lebanon. So uh, that's us jumping around the world. And uh, our motto and our uh, catchy phrase is turning dreamers into jumpers, one adventure at a time. Why turning dreamers into jumpers? Well, because uh, first of all, we started traveling around the world for, uh, we've been traveling around the world for 12 years now, and uh, we realized that we wanted to give a little spice to our, uh, what we've been doing and to our missions, and we wanted to bring along people to travel with us and give the opportunity for other people to be able to discover the world. But who we really are, just to give you again a brief introduction, the Globe Jumper is a humanitarian and adventure travel movement that was founded in 2012 in Montreal. Um, we've been best friends from childhood uh, and we've uh, been united by the love of travel. Uh, we met actually at the Université de Montréal, both of us were doing a bachelor's degree in biology. Uh, reunited by the, by the love of traveling and um, we've been to a lot of exotic places and uh, through the years we've shared uh, experiences that have left us with uh, a thirst to explore more and travel more. Uh, I mean, we've been to, uh, I've been to a lot of countries in my life, I've traveled to all the continents and uh, I had the opportunity to uh, enjoy myself and, with, and share all these adventures with my buddy. And at the same time we wanted to, uh, we, we used, when we were traveling together we used to have a habit of just taking uh, uh, pictures while we're traveling but we wanted to be jumping in our pictures because uh, it's more exotic and uh, it, it gives a better effect. 
So, um, so yeah, I'm, j I'm just going to show you a few pictures of uh, where I've traveled around the world with uh, Imad. This is in Berlin, this is back in Lebanon, back home, this is south of France and Costa Rica. Uh, this is in Panama, this is in Canada in the west coast, San Francisco. Um, and I have a lot of nice motos uh, that I share on my social media. I always say if your, dreams, if your dreams don't scare you, they are not big enough and they really are not big enough. Um, this is on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro on 6,000 meters. Um, this is also another one, uh, in, this is in uh, uh, Panama too. Sundarta Salinta Sobhyata Ine hun hamra visista Rani Third Design Collection Exclusive and largest variety of sari, lehenga and kurta suwa Two in one, boutique and health care Hala Samanti Horek Samosia Tata, Dom, Bath, Migraine, Pottery, Raw Paralysis, Co. Guarantee Kasat, Upachar Garincho. Rani Todd Design Collection, Baktis Putali, Sunrise Arcade 9, Kathmandu. Contact 985113689. 985114589. Proprietor Dr. Nandani Sarba, Film Producer Basant Kumar Srasta, Coordinator Ram Bhandari. Are you ready? And uh, yeah, we started posting our pictures online. Some of the pictures you just saw, we started posting them online on uh, Facebook and Instagram. It was in 2012. Back then, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and using social media was still at the beginning. Uh, we were still uh, kind of new to this. And we kind of met a travel blogger, and he told us, uh, why don't you post? We were, we, I was not a big fan of social media. I used just to take pictures for myself. And he told us, why don't you share your pictures and put them on, uh, on social media? And this is when we started, this is when we came up with the catchy phrase, globe jumpers. And we started posting our pictures. And uh, we got a lot of nice feedback. We got a lot of followers. I mean, I think in one month, we got like 10,000 followers. Uh, we applied for the Amazing Race Canada. We didn't get accepted, but our video was viewed. I think like uh, 50, 60,000 views. So that gave us a lot of attention. And uh, yeah, and we both, uh, that was after traveling together for six years. We both knew that we had a nice passion for traveling, but we wanted to do something more. You know, when you start a blog, when you start doing something, uh, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be considered like everybody else. There's a lot of travel bloggers online. So we wanted to do something more to what we've been doing. So the idea of Globe Jumpers was born a travel sharing platform and you know little did you know a lot of people were tagging us in our jumps and sending us pictures on Instagram and it was overwhelming and um, and it was it was actually very fun to see all this attention um, but what is really our vision you know after years uh, visiting uh, local communities the way we travel is uh, we, we really love uh, backpacking uh, we don't do all-inclusive, uh, uh, we do last-minute travel, we don't really search a lot, we don't really book a lot, we just go there and try to live with people, we hitchhike a lot, uh, we try to, I mean, I've, I've slept in places in Burundi and Rwanda next to people, I don't know, I've been invited to places, I don't even, even in China, when I, when I was in China, um, and um, I'll tell you the story later, but yeah, this is the way we travel, and you know, when you travel, um, when you, when you travel that way, you kind of see the, the real life, how people live and, you know, we've been to places in Africa and in, Ch and in uh, South America and where we wanted to actually uh, give more visibilities to people and actually not just show the beautiful side of traveling, but also show how we can help people. And, um, you know, it's, we, we, we always like to get in contact with people and get to know them and we don't like to be treated as... Um, as just tourists, we like to be treated as locals. Um, so the Globe Jumpers is actually a non-religious. It's an apolitical, it's eco-responsible uh, travel sharing platform. Uh, I don't know. I was uh, back here. I was uh, 22 years old. I was a bit stupid. Um, today I would not take this picture. Uh, this bear actually just woke up from hibernation, and uh, after showing this picture to a trooper, he told me that you're really stupid because he could have actually jumped on you and eaten you. <laughs> so, uh, and we're a socially conscious travel movement. Imad is, um, is a big advocate. He always preaches about um, being uh, eco-responsible and about, uh, about just being, when we travel, just being responsible and not n care about the planet. Um, I mean, we have a lot of values, I know, but these are all values that we stand for and these are all values that we use when we travel. 
So the idea also is to give our fellow travelers the opportunity to bring local solutions to global problems by pairing grassroots organizations with donors and international volunteers willing to give a helping hand. Which means that because we had a lot of attention on, on social media and we had a lot of followers, we, just, we didn't want to just get likes and get sponsors. We also wanted to do missions and try to help different communities. And we thought that you know if we can use the positive side of social media instead of just, um, and instead of just showing the beauty side of social media, why don't we use that? And so the online world was a very nice platform to be able to share this experience. Um, so we use our social media accounts to keep in contact with the fellow travelers by sharing quotes, photos, and daily travel inspirations. So this, is, this was at the beginning. This was when we were kind of building our platform. We were just using social media. We didn't have a website, so we thought it would be the best way to get exposure. And you know, you, you, today you speak by the number of followers you have. People, if you have a lot of followers, people are like, oh yeah, I'll follow you. Oh, that's cool, they want to talk to you. If you don't have a lot of followers, it's actually very sad because today, in 2018, I think it's, um, extremely sad how our world is always surrounded by social media. Uh, it's a bit, um, I mean, I can't really talk about it because um, I can't talk about the negative side because I use a lot of social media. But um, since we started back in 2012 until today, we kind of shifted our, uh, the way we think and we, the way we post and share. And today we only try to share about the positive side of social media. We, you all saw how Facebook is getting affected by uh, negative posts and how only people are seeking likes and followers and all that stuff. So I think there's going to be a big change in, in, in social media world and I really hope it happens. But for the time being, all we can do is preach about it. Uh, let's, let's, let's get back to uh, the, the, the actual fact, globe jumpers. So don't tell me how educated you are, tell me how much you have traveled. Um, I only have a bachelor's degree and I'm trying to do my master's. I was actually accepted at McGill to do my master's here. I have a 2.4 GPA which is extremely low. I have a very low GPA because I was always traveling and I didn't really care about studying. And the only reason why they accepted me at McGill is because I had, I have traveled so much and I did so many humanitarian missions by myself that they're like, yeah, we'll give him a shot and it turned out to be fine. I'm not telling you don't study, you should study and you should get good grades, but I mean, if you can get your ways, why not? So um, this is a shot taken at uh, Mu Chan Yu in, uh, in, uh, Be in Beijing. Uh, traveling leaves you speechless and then it tells you into storyteller. That's why I'm here today. I can, tell you, I can talk to you about all my adventures the whole night, but I only have 20 minutes, probably have 12 minutes left. So I'll move on. Uh, every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. And I tried, you know, I, I, I had the opportunity to go and help my parents with their business in Qatar. I had the opportunity to make a lot of money, but I decided to follow my passion. I decided to travel. And every day today on, social, on, on Instagram and Facebook, we post a picture. Um, whether or not it's a jump or not, you know, just talking about our travels. Sometimes we post other people's jump. I just want to show you how fascinating it was just receiving a lot, of, a lot of jumps from a lot of people. These are actually not my pictures. These are people that took the pictures themselves and they sent it to us. But it's pretty incredible how you can start moving on social media and people will get inspired and they will start doing the same thing. It's overwhelming also to get positive messages, also people telling you that you're inspiring them to travel. Uh, these are some of the pictures. Um, they're pretty uh, amazing. They're pretty amazing to see. Um, you know, every time I receive a picture, I get tagged on, on social media. I'm blown away. Um, and uh, it's very challenging. It's very nice. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to share with you just a bit to show you how our social media grew bigger by time and time. Uh, today we're around, uh, between all platforms, we're around 140,000 followers, which is pretty nice. Uh, but we're more, focus more focused today on quality and doing missions rather than getting followers. Actually, I lost, I think I lost 10,000 followers within the last year just because I've been interacting less and being less online and focusing more on missions. So yeah, I mean, these are some of the cool pictures that I sent that I have been uh, receiving. Uh, this is one of the best shots. I've, this is in Machu Picchu, one of the best, best shots I've, uh, I've, uh, I've received and posted online. I think it got like 8,000 likes. And yeah, like I said, today uh, we're uh, 130,000 followers, 18,000 on Facebook, 22,000 on followers. I do, we do have a lot of attention and uh, traffic on Instagram because it's the easiest for us as travel photographers, we just go online and post them. Um, but yeah, like I told you, I've lost a lot of followers and that's because I've been interacting less and focusing more on my work. 
But this is the beautiful part of why I came here today, to tell you about the missions we've done. The first one we've done is called Aya Jumps. Who is Aya? Aya is this little girl here, and this shot was taken in Gobi Desert in Mongolia. Now, some of you, all of you, half of you here come from China, right? And um, uh, Imad and I, both of us, we had a dream is to take the trans Siberian train and to travel from Mongolia to China. And we decided to bring with us uh, this special lady. Uh, I'll show you her face. This is, this is Aya. She has Down syndrome. I don't know if you know what Down syndrome is. Trisomy 21. She has Down syndrome. She is Imad's sister. Uh, she, she's, she's an athlete. Uh, she does a lot of sports, she speaks four languages, she's very stimulated, she's very awake and we decided to travel with her for uh, six weeks <coughs> and we decided, to cross from Mon we decided to cross from Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia by just public transport with nothing booked, only a flight from uh, only a flight from, Mong from Ulaanbaatar going from Montreal and leaving from Beijing back to Montreal and our challenge was to cross all this distance with her and get to uh, Guilin in south of China and it was fascinating it was it was amazing we had a beautiful experience um, uh, we traveled 4,900 kilometers <coughs> um, uh, we got there we got to Ulaanbaatar we met a guide um, and it was very friendly and then we drove together around uh, around Mongolia and then we took the Trans-Siberian train uh, in, um, in central Mongolia and then we got to Beijing and I'll show you funny pictures later on but uh, the, the experience by itself was amazing. Now if you ask me why did we decide to do that uh, we decided to do that because we wanted to give um, we wanted to give Aya the opportunity to be able to travel with us. This was on a train in Beijing in the metro. Uh, we were dancing. We danced all over China. And people were looking at us very weird, but uh, <coughs> it was very funny to see the people's reaction. That was the first mission we did um, crossing Mongolia and we filmed a documentary about it and uh, our aim was to show that people with mental disability can also travel if we give them an opportunity. Um, then, um, then, we come to, um, then we come to, you all know this place where it is. <coughs> uh, I would show you the video but I still have five minutes. Uh, I'll show you the video at the end. Uh, this, these are, this is one of the shots that we took in the Trans-Siberian train. This was on a sleeping train. First time in China I took a bus on a sleeping train. 15 hours from the borders to uh, Beijing. And this was on a train. Uh, actually this was on the first one, this, the previous one was on a bus, this was on a train, 27 hour train from Beijing to Guilin, you know the distance, that was crazy, it was something that I would never do again because it was, I was in the last section because there was no seats whatsoever and you can see on my face how painful it was, you can see the people how they're traveling but people do this, people do this journey every day and it's fascinating to see how people travel. The next one is chapter 2 Burundi, Burundi is in East Central Africa. Um, after working with mental disability, I kind of got a knowledge more about mentally disabled people and I had the opportunity to travel to Burundi and uh, to host a school uh, for mentally disabled children. Uh, with the help of my social media, I raised funded, um, uh, raise funded $2,290 with a raise funder and online we did a, ca a campaign and we collected $3,000. So we had a total of only 6,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, I did a small video online, put it on my uh, social media, got 15 volunteers and yeah we just, uh, these are all the beautiful volunteers and we just went to Burundi. Uh, of course I teamed up with the foundation and uh, yeah we, we did a summer camp, Colonie de Vacances, uh, for around 200 kids suffering from different mental disability, um, Down syndrome, autism and um, uh, even some, some of the kids had psycho psychosis and different uh, uh, mental, mental problems. And uh, yeah, we were we were just doing uh, working on the five uh, uh, five signs, uh, working on uh, uh, mobilité, on the vision, and how to read, how to write for for exactly a month. We we even had a nursery, and it was one of the best experiences I've done in my whole life. I'm very grateful to be able to have done that. Um, we were there for exactly a month, but we teamed up with an association over there, and um, we kept on doing. Uh, we kept our promise on. We are sponsored three mentally disabled kids, and we're working with Feed the Child Burundi. Um, who's a foundation over there that take care of the children that live on the streets and, and these are all positive sides of the social media that well, how I use social media and the benefit of having of using social media in a positive way um, 
And that, like today, we have a Sunday meal every Sunday, every beginning of every every beginning of every every first Sunday of every month. We have a meal sponsored by us. We do fundra fundraisers every now and then, and uh, we have a chance to offer these kids a meal. Um, uh, we've been we've been doing that for a year and a half, and I personally uh, have vouched to keep this going on until I uh, until the growth until the globe jumper exists. These are some of the pictures that we're taking about a few weeks ago. Uh, some of these kids are still being fed. Um, unfortunately, there, there was a civil war happening over there for the past year. There was a coup d'etat and it couldn't, it couldn't work, but uh, uh, we have people on the ground that are still helping these kids. Uh, I just want to show you how we, uh, we organize our trips. We pick a country, we choose a project or a foundation, we find volunteers, we raise money, we jump, we explore, we travel and then we always travel responsibly. Now how you can help, I'll give you my cards uh, when I'm done here. You can all follow me on social media if you would like and you can also go on my website. You can donate to some of the previous missions or some of the foundations I have teamed up with. You can sponsor us, jump with us, you can share, you can follow us, that helps a lot. Um, and I recently did a project with uh, some of the Syrians refugees that were, uh, that were caught in the border in, uh, in Greece. Uh, I just did a, I just, uh, I, have a, I had a friend, a photographer that was there and I just told him to shoot a few pictures of some of the kids jumping in, uh, on the borders and uh, I got some amazing results. I did a campaign, I collected $1,000 in a week and we bought them lamps so they can, uh, because they were all living in a tent, so we got them lamps and that was also another mission I did. Some of the missions now I do them online, like I told you, I don't have to be on the ground, I just use the positive side of my social media and I uh, get it for the good benefits. I also give conferences like this one around all the schools and some of the, some of the universities. That's also something I love to do, especially talking to the kids, inspiring them to travel around the world. And um, yeah, summer camps, fantastic. Uh, I also, uh, also uh, travel along Donné Sans Comté, it's a blood foundation. It's a blood foundation, so I like to preach about the importance of giving blood. I travel with this logo around the world. And uh, I've also been to Ushuaia, which is the last country in South America, which is pretty awesome with this logo. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, this is my website, www.theglobejumpers.org. You can visit me, you can follow me, you can like me, you can donate, you can do whatever you want. And uh, yeah, this is it, The Globe Jumpers. Now before I leave, I know I still have a minute. It's a one minute video, I would like to show you a teaser. Uh, of uh, our mission in, uh, in Burundi that we did with Aya. Alors on peut plus. Il est fatigué. Sundarta Salinta Sobyata Ine Hun Hamra Visista Rani Third Design Collection Exclusive and largest variety of sari, lehenga, and kurta surwa Two in one Boutique and health care Hala Samanti Horek Samosa Tata, Dom, Bath, Migraine, Pottery, Rob Paralysis, Co. Guarantee Kasat, Upachar Garincha. Rani Todd Design Collection, Bhaktis Putali, Sunrise Arcad 9, Kathmandu. Contact 985113689. 985114589. Proprietor Dr. Nandani Sarva, Film Producer Vasant Kumar Surastha, Coordinator Ram Bhandari. 